Hello, everyone. We're going to get started. Please uh, make yourself comfortable. Get a seat. Uh, for those of you in the back, uh, welcome. Uh, please make yourself comfortable. Uh, for those of you who have been with us since this morning, thank you for sticking around. For those of you that just joined us, welcome to the mobile business track. We are here to talk about optimizing engagement and LTV for uh, the sake of making your players be delighted um, with personalization. Personalization is not new. It's been going on around us. Um, Netflix did it for movies the same way that Amazon did it for shopping and what Spotify did for music. It changed our lives. I can certainly attest to the fact that it changed mine. Um, it certainly has made my life more efficient. I would even dare say better, happier. Um, I used to spend a lot of time browsing for music, but now instead of browsing for music, I open that cute tiny little app, and the only thing that I need to care about is doing the stuff I like, which is listening to the music itself. We believe that personalization is the future, and we want to bring the future into you today. Through personalization, personalized placement, which is a product that Unity has developed uh, that will be made available for you developers to bring delight to your players. My name is Felix Tay. I'm the director of product at Unity. Um, joining me today will be Stephen Sullivan, director of product at Unity, and Nicholas Boulay, our esteemed guest speaker, the head of growth from Space Ape. Let's take a moment before we start with the um, product slides, uh, a recap from the keynote last night um, about the framework that we use at Unity with player delight at the center of our uh, attention. You use the Unity engine to create game content, game content that you've made to delight your players. Um, once you made the game content, you can utilize the data insights, the signals, and the intelligence that the Unity ecosystem can provide for you to actually continue on and engage them in a very meaningful way. And then finally, you would use our monetization services to put some more money to your piggy bank that one you, you are ready and you break that piggy bank, you can then invest more in R&D to again create more content. What this means is this is a virtuous cycle. It's a virtuous loop that we believe can happen if, as mentioned from the beginning, you put player delight at the center of everything that you do. Um, LTV is a perfect metrics for that because what LTV represent is not a trade-off. It's a balance. You never. You no longer have to choose whether engagement or monetization is an or, because we believe that engagement, monetization, monetization is an and. LTV optimization is a perfect matrix that basically aligns well with the whole notion of player delight at the center of everything that we do. And the best way to do it is to understand your interaction with the player from start to finish, the end-to-end -end process. Um, for example, the first interaction you had with your player is to acquire them, right? When you acquire your player, Unity, and there's going to be more talks in details later this afternoon by Yuho about how we acquire a player the right way. And what we mean by the right way is we want to make sure that the ads that they see in trying to install your game is an ad that this player likes. It's an ad that the player is bound to like the genre of the game or the category of the game that you're making. But once they install the game and they interact with your game content, first time user experience is also very important. We need to make sure that they engage, they don't stumble upon it, they know exactly how to progress in their game to do more complex activities, such as doing in-app in purchase. We will know at some point that people actually want to do in-app purchases, and when they do that, they can finally get into the more meaningful part of the game, which is connecting with other players, competing with other players. That's when you get the deeper connection. And when you see and you solve for this problem end-to-end, -end, that's when LTV happens. Before we tackle the remaining opportunities that the, this product is aiming to solve, let's first celebrate the things that we have done so far. So this is really a congratulations and a big round of applause to all of you in the room. For those of you that have partnered with Unity, you have made 60% more revenue this year versus last year. And for those of you in EMEA, you have made 61% this year more than last year. So a big round of applause for everybody in the room.
Next is the opportunity itself. So um, let's get back to the fact that over 96% of players don't actually make in-app purchases. Um, in uh, six words, what's the drunkest you've ever been? And one individual responded, I paid 100 bucks in in-app purchases. Um, well, I must say, I had paid maybe over a thousand bucks in in-app purchases, and I'm pretty sure I was sober. So, um, but that's a separate problem. For now, let's just settle with the fact that congratulations and you're welcome. <laughs> um, but going back into the heart of the problem, we still need to solve how do we settle the fact that over 96% of the players don't make in-app purchases. You might actually think that the answer is advertising. True. But one way to do it is to do a binary split, like you have your 4% payer, you have your 96% non-payer, you basically offer an in-app purchase uh, promotion here and advertising here and call it a day. But what if I tell you we can do something better? Um, the same way that the world's rarely black or white, there's the gray in between and there's the gradient. And the way you solve this is not with pink colors, but with numbers and data science. And that's what our product is about. We deploy a lot of algorithm and data signals that we collect to our, in our ecosystem to differentiate things in the more finer details that can actually benefit you and your players. For example, if I am a uh, defensive player and I like to buy shield to basically protract my castle, but I don't really buy any of the offensive we weapons to basically compete with other players, from the perspective of offering an offensive weapon, like you know, a sword or like a cannonball, am I a pair? I am not a pair. But from a shield perspective, I am a payer. That's just one of the ways for us to basically distinguish payer and non-payer in the more finer details. And we will fine tune it. And that's the gradient that I talked about, not the black and white. So this is the product that we have launched so far. Um, just to take a one year look back, last year we announced this product called Unified Auction. Uh, we basically blew the competition. We leapfrogged them. Uh, the reason why we believe Unified Auction is just inherently better than mediation is because mediation, uh, from an advertising perspective, your inventory is being sold blindly. When people actually put ads on your game, you don't know exactly at that particular transaction how much you are getting paid for. You only know what you're getting paid for in aggregate. Unified Auction solved that problem by making sure that every single transaction is fair and transparent. You know exactly what you're getting paid for per impression. But to bring it back into what we're talking about today, Unified Auction was made to solve one particular goal, maximizing your ad's revenue. It's very different from what personalized placement is aiming to solve, which is bringing back the lifetime player value into your knowledge, into your insight, so you can then again put the player delight as the center of your attention. So this time, with personalized placement, we would like to say that we decided to leapfrog ourselves. Because we want to be bold, we want to make sure that we align to back to your interests as the developers to delight your players. In execution, what does this actually mean? So again, going back to the unified auction schema, uh, the highest bid wins. End of story, super straightforward. Um, because we want to maximize your ads revenue. What personalized placement is going to do for you are two different things. So one. Your catalog will expand. Now there's a product that is called IP Promo, and there's more content types that you can add into your ecosystem where they can now be part of the competition. Um, second, given the fact that we are now again bringing back the whole long-term uh, uh, value into the picture versus a short-term transaction, we are going to make the decision of what content to be shown based on the long-term value, not the instant gratification for the from the current transaction. What that means is this. Imagine for a second that if you have a player that basically interact with the IP promo content a lot, and in addition to interacting, they actually make a purchase by virtue of the fact that we are showing that promotion, and then in turn, they play and interact with your game longer, and they are more engaged as a player. That is a winner. And that, in that exact same situation, if you are competing with ads for the placement, IP promo will be the content that will be shown for your player. So now, again, back to the whole notion of no trade-off, no choosing. Everything is available to you at the same time, and we are going to personalize it player by player from a cohort of one. To recap, personalized placement is not just about monetization. 
It's delivering each player the most meaningful experience, player by player, in a cohort of one. So now next, uh, we're going to make a, a bold claim that we believe it's possible, only possible, if it's with Unity. We want to basically back that statement up by three facts and three information for you to consider. First, we are the leading mobile game engine, and by being the leading mobile game engine, we have the privilege of getting data from billions of device signals, uh, device signals from um, many different aspects of your gameplay. And then second is, given the fact that we are representing tens and thousands of different of apps, we can use this device signals and information to actually not bring your game to the Unity ecosystem, but rather bring the Unity ecosystem to your game. We have solved all the hard problems, the data collection, the processing, the machine learning agents, and the competition on how to basically solve for LTV. So when you basically enable us, you will get all this benefit from the get-go. Second is, you might think, given that this is a complex solution, that integration will be difficult. Well, we're pleased to announce that integration is two checkboxes away. You have to enable ads, you have to enable IAP, and you will get personalized placement um, uh, by default. Um, the product, of course, is still in closed beta, so we will have more uh, information later on to basically explain how you can participate. Third, um, as mentioned before, we are no longer focusing on the short-term revenue. In the current products, and if you think about advertising as a product suite, um, if you have some impression that is going to pay you $5, another one that is $4, it's a pretty straightforward outcome. The $5 should win. However, what if we tell you that that $5 is a bad ad experience that your player would actually not like it and they will drop from your game? That is not good from an LTV perspective. And in this new world, that would not happen because we have a vision of what the current action is going to dictate future consequences. And we bring all the value from that future consequences into the valuation of the present. So all the actions that we're going to take by virtue of this product we'll take into consideration what is the impact from a lifetime value perspective. And we hope this will align well with the fact that we want to put player at the center of what we do. Personalized placements, again, from a requirements perspective, um, it's still in close beta. Um, in order to enable this product, um, there are two requirements. One is you need to be exclusive with Unity Ads. The reason why is, as the name suggests, personalized placements. We are still utilizing placements from the advertising world to, in order to display the content. And the, re the other reason is, in order for us to get a full data science insights about uh, the player activities to calculate lifetime value, we need to have the full spectrum of what they do. And the that's the reason why exclusivity with Unity Ads is a requirement for us to activate this product. Second is, if you open up Netflix and you have a movie and there's only one movie in there, you can personalize everything you want, but personalization just simply won't happen unless you have a selection of content to choose from. So the second thing that you need to do, other than enabling advertising, is to enable all the other types of content that Unity has to offer. Um, IP promo is an example that we use in this case because you can then combine all the selection of advertising campaigns possible to choose from and the IP promo catalog that you have, and that's when the personalization is going to happen. Once you enable this one too, then you will have personalized placement. What's, what better way to basically describe the journey, because that's the one, two, three step, rather than, other than uh, uh, someone that has gone through the journey themselves. Uh, so Nicholas Belay from Space Ape has made a decision to go exclusive in their partnership with Unity Ads, and Stephen Sullivan has spent tremendous effort in creating our great IP promo product to uh, uh, to eventually enable personalized placement. So next in the speaker roster, I would like to invite Nicholas Belay to come on stage. Please welcome Nicholas. Thank you, Felix. Uh, hi, guys. I'm Nick. Uh, I'm in charge of user acquisition and monetization in SpaceApp. Um, actually, we've been working a lot with Unity and, and, and utilizing a lot of their tools uh, for all of our games. All of our games are made in Unity. We're quite power users of uh, the Unity ad uh, platform for user acquisition. 
And in May last year, when we, uh, when we released our latest title, Fastlane, we wanted to focus on ads. And that was the perfect opportunity for us to uh, go deeper in the, ad in the ad monetization optimization. And we started working with Unity. Um, first, in our mediation, we had the mediation layer. We added Unity ads there. And then six months later, we decided to go with Unity as our uh, ad exclusive partner. What I want to talk to you today is about um, those learning that we gathered in our ad monetization journey and how significant impact it can have. So first, a bit about SpaceApp. We are a mobile gaming company based in London. We are six years old now. Uh, in June last year, we partnered with Supercell. Uh, we are 115 people, small team of 115 people, all based in London. We are 33 different uh, countries represented in the office, and we organize in 10 small teams. We've got four teams that are operating live games, and we've got six teams that are working on new projects, all the new things that are going to come up uh, this year or next for SpaceApp. We've reached $150 million uh, in revenue so far, but our mission is to make a top grossing game. Um, and we believe that to get there, we need to define and own uh, a new games category. So that means taking a lot more risk, that means a lot more innovation. Fast lane, in that sense, is a bit of an hybrid. Um, the gameplay is not really innovative, uh, it's pretty much iterative, it's a safe bet, but the innovation on fast lane lies in our ad monetization and the way we implemented it and our live app structure. So now I've got a short clip to show you a bit more about space about Fastlane. Cool. Uh, so as you could see, Fasen is a scrolling shooter. It's based on the classic arcade shooters from the 80s. Uh, it's very casual, it's very addictive, and it has uh, some RPG element attached to it that make it a bit, more, a bit more deep. It's been made in six months by a team of eight people. Um, it's now running on a team of three. And Fasen is not a genre-defining hit. It's not, it's not the game that I was talking about when I was talking about the mission of the company. But it's been a pretty amazing training ground when it comes to monetization, when it comes to UA, and when it comes to live ops. In terms of numbers, when we talk about Fasen, we're talking about 20 million installs. We're talking about 700,000 DAU, and we're talking about $30 million uh, in run rate revenue. Now, out of the $30 million uh, run rate, Half of it is coming from ads. The other, ads, the other half is coming from in-app payment. So that's a really healthy balance, and that's also to show you how important ads are for this game in particular. Um, so that's the kind of scale that we're talking about when we're talking about fast lane. But this slide is even more important than the previous one. It kind of shows you the trend uh, that we had since December, uh, six months after launch. So the blue is the uh, daily ad revenue, the orange is the in-app payment, uh, in payment revenue on a daily basis, and the gray line is the daily active users. And since beta, we've been constantly optimizing and testing uh, our ad product, both in the ad placement on our partner, with our partners and different offerings. And in December, we increased our LTV by 30%. So now 30% is a big number. And it, it's kind of like a step change to our previous LTV, and it unlocked new user acquisition opportunities. It unlocked new channel, and it unlocked new scale. That's when we started to invest more in marketing to, to promote this game and to actually multiply this effect uh, that we had on the LTV increase. 
In four months, ODAU increased by 4x. We went from 170,000 uh, DAU to 700,000 DAU. Our revenue went up by 4.5x. Now we're making in between 80,000 to 100,000 dollars a day. Um, yeah, and we're even more profitable than we were before. So all that new scale was only possible because of ad optimization and the, the user acquisition possibility that it unlocked. And we've learned a lot uh, in that journey. The first thing that we've learned was ads must support the brand. You don't want your ads to come out of the blue. Um, that, that, that's, that's a bad experience in terms of user, uh, user uh, experience, user retention. Try to create a, a smooth experience that includes the ads from the beginning. Uh, think about ads from, from the beginning when you build your experience as a game and support the brand. The example here that you have is basically what we are showing to our users before they, being, uh, before they see an interstitial. So it kind of like make the ads feel a bit more natural. The second um, learning that we gathered was ads must work for the player. I would, my advice would be focus on rewarded ads that work, they work well. And when you do, make sure you design your rewards so that they fit with the economy. What we did with Fastlane is that the ads fits, like we thought about the ads, at the moment we thought about the economy and we built the two of them together. Um, so make sure that they fit in the economy, make sure that they don't cannibalize in a payment. There is a way where you can have a complementary uh, reward and convert well. You want your players to become viewers and test them often. This would be, for example, I think, a pretty cool uh, use case for all the personalization concept that Felix was talking about uh, a bit earlier. We didn't go that far in terms of personalization, but we tested a lot. And we ended up with four uh, winning prompts that are now rotating. And we're adding new prompts every time that we're adding a new feature. In Fastlane, 80% of our DAU are watching ads. So we take that as, as a win. The last learning, probably the most important one or the more interesting, at least to me, is that your ad placement must not only work for the player, but it must work for the advertiser as well. At the end of the day, it's the advertiser that's paying for the party. Like, it, if ads is at the core of your business model, then you need to deliver what the advertiser is looking for. And what they're looking for, it's most likely an install in the world of rewarded video or mobile performance marketing. So your ad placement must drive installs in order to have high CPM. I think at the end of the day, UA and ad monetization are just the two sides of the same coin. And, 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 and they play nicely together. If I put my user acquisition hat on, there's no value for me to spend marketing dollars in impression that will, at the end of the day, don't convert in any install. So I think you have no choice if you start uh, investing a lot in ads. You have to drive results for the advertiser. And all this brings us to where we are today with Fastlane. We have an ad up down of 13 cents. That's only on ads, and that's in the US. We have a much more simplified ad stack with only one SDK that we have to maintain. We understand better our ad LTV at a user level, and all that allows us to spend a million dollars in user acquisition per month and be profitable under two months. So that's where we are. Uh, I will now welcome Stephen for the in-app in payment promo. Thanks a, Thanks a lot, Nick, for sharing those exciting results for us. Now I'm going to talk about a few more details of our latest products. Let's start out with the IP promo. IP promo is a new way to monetize your users. We use the server-driven system to target the right player at the right time with the right message. This is a little bit similar to typical advertising, where you're walking down the street and you see an ad for McDonald's. And you say, hey, maybe I want to go to McDonald's. IP promo gives your users more opportunities to buy. We do this in one very important way. We're able to use machine learning algorithms and reinforcement learning to progressively show the right promo to the right user. 
Therefore, a user earlier in your game experience will see a different promo later in their game experience. Also, the behavior user have shown in the past around purchasing, around ad viewing, affects the promos that they see later on. This product is free and simple to set up. All you have to do is click a couple buttons in the editor, turn on ads, turn on IAP, upload your creatives, and the system will automatically optimize it all for you. Lastly, there's the Unity data advantage. Our models for promo targeting are built off of data across over a billion users we see within the entire Unity network. This gives those models the ability to have pinpoint accuracy when maximizing LTV. Tandem Games released the title called My Gym. And when they were using IEP promo during our beta period, they saw a 24% lift in total revenue. So that includes all the IEP they're making in the game. By giving users additional opportunities to buy during the life cycle of your game and not just waiting till they walk into your virtual store, you are nearly guaranteed to make more money. The next thing is we also saw an 8% increase in transactions per payer. That is, people that were paying were able to be given the right promotions over time and increase their transaction activity. Next is cross promo. Whereas IAP promo maximizes the value of your users within a given game, cross promo extends the lifetime of value across your entire portfolio. We do this by looking at the user, figuring out when they're likely to churn, and then promoting them into other games within your network to increase their value. This game is this product is also free and simple to set up. Once you're integrated with ads, you will be able to use cross promo. All of our products are controlled and reported on using the Unity dashboard. Our operate dashboard gives you a full picture of your revenue, retention, and user base. It shows you the split between IAP revenue and ads revenue that you're making. It shows what you're making with a single project on multiple different platforms and what the division is, as well as all the detailed metrics around ad monetization. Some of those metrics include eCPM, impressions, revenue, and we're soon to be adding more second level metrics. How many views per viewer is, are watching ads in your game? What percentage of your users are watching ads? We're gonna back that up with benchmarks that then give you an idea of how effective your ads are as opposed to the industry standards that we see across the Unity network. Um, so those are some exciting new features that we continue to add on the Unity dashboard on a weekly basis. Our products work best when you're using the full Unity suite, as Felix mentioned earlier. The first step is to get exclusivity with Unity ads. As Nick said, you can get up to 30% revenue lift by using our simple ad solution with the unified auction and the ability to mix and cross promo for personalized placements. The second is adding IAP promo to a game adds an additional revenue lift on top of what you're already making. And then finally, as mentioned in the keynote yesterday, using our algorithms that target based on lifetime value of the user, you can see a further lift in revenue. When you add all these things together, it makes an extreme improvement in your ability to have success as a game studio. I just talked about a few products that are in beta. All these products are available to be signed up for at create.unity3d.com slash mobile beta. If you're interested in personalized placements and can integrate all three, we will pr prioritize you on our beta lists. And now Felix will come up and wrap things up with some Q&A.
Thank you very much. All right, so um, I guess I'll conclude the presentation before the Q&A with a story. Um, I used to live in Michigan, and during the winter time, you know, with the winter being that harsh, there's really very limited things that you can actually do with friends. So we oftentimes decided to basically, you know, watch a movie through a rental. Um, I spent about probably 15 minutes to go to this movie rental shop called Blockbuster. And then I spent another one to two hours to browse the movie I actually like, and then queue up another 15 minutes at the cashier to just check out, and then another 15 minutes to drive back home. If you sum all that time that I spent, that is the movie itself. <laughs> that is the amount of time that I could be spending in actually just sitting back on my couch and hitting a button, saying using Netflix today, and be on my merry way, and I'm happier. So um, in conclusion, again, we want to just say thank you for listening. Personalized placements is aimed to solve the same exact problem that I just described earlier. We want to make sure that by the time your player open up your app, they will be instantly delighted, and both you and your players can focus on what you like best, which is making and playing video games. Um, given the fact that this is a personalized pl placement track, so we want to make the Q&A a little bit more personalized in touch. So. Other than um, me answering the questions here in front of the stage, I would also like to invite my colleagues and also uh, partners to basically form the groups. Uh, we understand that your journey and your stage of partnership with Unity right now are in different stages. For example, if you are still considering about using ads with Unity or going exclusive, it might make sense for you to actually talk to the people that are on the group number one. But if you're already there and you're trying to learn about more of our IP promo product to actually enable personalized placement, you need to talk to group number two. If you already have one and two and you really want to learn about personalized placements, then you're probably uh, in luck to talk to the group number three. Or generally, if you want to learn about personalized placements more in details. Um, so again, like, um, let me try to start calling um, group number one. Um, Nicholas Boulay, Paul Bowen, Mark Bierman. Could you folks please um, go to that left side of the room? Um, the front side of the room here in this breakout is a bit more uh, spacious, so we're going to utilize it. I would invite people to start um, uh, go up front if you have any questions uh, about going exclusive with Unity Ads. And then group number two, Stephen Sullivan, SEC. Could you please go uh, to the center stage? Um, um, and then group number three, David Goldborn, Nabib, and Charlie to the right, please. And then now I'm happy to answer any questions you have regarding the presentation. But please, at the same time, if you have more one-on-ones that you want to get answered, please feel free to just keep walk into these folks and then have your questions answered. Thank you so much, everyone.